The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has today decided to award the 2019 Nobel Prize in Physics with one half to James Peebles for theoretical discoveries in physical cosmology. So there was the big breaking news just before we went on the air this morning, the announcement from Stockholm of this year's Nobel Prize winner in physics. The name you heard, James Peebles, causing a lot of excitement in this country because he was born in the St. Boniface neighborhood of Winnipeg, winning for his theoretical discoveries in physical cosmology. He's currently a professor at Princeton, as we've been telling you, but he did his undergrad at the University of Manitoba. And the statement from them talking about their excitement, today's news is enormously exciting for us and enormously empowering for our students. Uh, other institutions are celebrating this as well, including the Perimeter Institute in Waterloo, Ontario. Professor Robert Myers is with me this morning. He's the director of that Perimeter Institute. And good morning to you, sir. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Seth. It's great to be here. I, I want to see a big smile. Here's a Canadian-born physicist winning the top prize in science. What is your reaction to that? Oh, it's terrific. It's really tremendous news for... Uh, us here at Perimeter, but for the entire scientific community, not just in Canada, but worldwide. I mean, uh, Jim's a real giant in his field. Um, he sort of laid the foundations for a whole field of study, understanding the evolution and, and the uh, nature of the physical universe. And, you know, he was really doing it at a time when nobody else was paying attention. Started nobody back in, in 1964, he said, and kind of went reluctantly Absolutely. into this field of science. So here's how they've described it. Uh, laid a foundation for the transformation of cosmology over the last 50 years and is the basis of our contemporary ideas about the universe. Can you explain that to us? I, I'm looking at the blackboard thinking, I can't make head nor tail out of that. So in, in, in layman, non-scientist, non-physicist terms, help us uh, understand what he has contributed to our understanding of us. Well, he, he, I mean, there's a picture that we have of the physical universe that came out in the 1930s, that everything isn't static, but rather the universe expands. And so if, if we go backwards in time rather than forwards, that means that we shrink, everything shrinks down to a very dense, very hot mass, or, or, or some call it the singularity. And what Jim did is understand that it wasn't just a story, but that there was a very precise, um, you know, picture that we could draw from that, that we could infer all sorts of details about how the universe was evolving, how uh, structure formed, how the, the galaxies formed, how the stars formed. And, and it, it just, today we have a very precise picture of the universe at its present day, but also its evolution, how it emerged from the Big Bang. And Jim really laid the theoretical foundations for that entire field of study. Um, and as I was saying, he, he did it at a time when uh, very few people were interested in the topic. They thought it wasn't an area where we would ever have uh, be able to make precise measurements or to do detailed calculations. And Jim... Uh, well, really was a, a pioneer in every sense of the word. He was a pathfinder. He broke new ground, uh, and he proved them all wrong. Isn't that uh, fantastic? And now, and now he's winning yeah, the top prize for, for that persistence and tenacity. I'm wondering, you speak of him not in the abstract. You, you know him. Uh, your institute knows him. But you, having done grad work at Princeton yourself in a class taught by Professor Peebles, tell us a little bit about maybe what you learned from him and how he is as a teacher. Well, it was, it was an interesting time in the... Uh, 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 as I said, it was in, uh, in the uh, early 1980s. It was a time when a, a new idea was emerging in cosmology, something called inflation. Uh, and what Jim did is he, he wanted to learn about this, and he, he showed, well, he, he taught me not just about inflation, but he taught me that the best way to learn a, uh, new material is to teach a course. And that's exactly what he did. And uh, 
So I can remember not only the, the very impressive and clear lectures, but also the, uh, the good-natured uh, character that he presented himself with. Um, and it was really inspiring to me as a young Canadian grad student there uh, to see this, uh, you know, Canadian who had risen to be a giant uh, in that field. Well, that was one of the things that has struck me, and just in terms of the Perimeter Institute, we should just mention he's also, he's lent his name to some of the work that you are doing uh, there, so there is a connection at, the, at this level too. But picking up on your last statement, coming, doing undergraduate work at what is a relatively small university in this country and rising to become the giant as, as you describe him, no wonder the University of Manitoba is talking about what an empowering story it is for its students to learn that it now has a Nobel Prize winner. But not just Absolutely. one for you. I mean, last year at this time, we were celebrating Donna Strickland and now James Peoples. Now, I mean, what's going on with Canadian physics? <laughs> well, we're, we're, uh, we're on the rise. I mean, the country actually in the past 20 years, um, uh, not, well, the government, the, uh, the generosity, the, the vision of the government has really invested in research in this country in a number of strategic ways. And uh, we're, we're starting to reap uh, the benefits of that. Uh, we're seeing all sorts of success stories, not just success stories like uh, Jim, who, who went to Princeton, who, who, who uh, you know, went down to the United States and found his success there, but I think we're seeing a number of success stories right here in Canada. Um, an example being, you know, the, uh, uh, the the image of a, a black hole that was uh, came out last spring from yes. the Event Horizon Telescope uh, that you know was enabled uh, by a lot of efforts here in Waterloo and and uh, you know we're very proud to have one of our own perimeter family and uh, a professor at uh, Wa University of Waterloo. And we talked Avery about Broderick, that at the time. Who, uh, Many wonderful things. Yeah. I have to end it on that note because we're just about out okay. of time for this hour. But Professor Myers, what a pleasure to have you on the program and thank you. And sometime I'll, I'll speak to you privately about explaining that formula behind you on the blackboard because in the chalkboard because it's fascinating to me as well. <laughs> Thanks so much, okay. sir. Appreciate it. Robert Myers, the, the director of the Perimeter Institute in Waterloo. Day. You too, sir. Thank you.